Okay, when you're using a domestic machine to sew, sew your leather, you want to use a size 16 or 18 if your machine allows it in, your, in the machine. And you're gonna use a coarser type of thread that's specifically for sewing leather. But when you're sewing on your machine, you see I sewed this from the top. The stitch is really, really loose on the bottom. What most people think when it does that, that that means mess with the bobbin. That is not what that means. When the thread is loose on the bottom, that means the tension up top needs to be tighter. So you're gonna need to make your tension tighter. So by making it tighter, I, I did this one. Made it a little tighter, but it was still too loose. So I took it even further, made it even tighter, and that one came perfect. As you can see on the right side, the stitches are great. But, so that lets you know it's okay. But the bottom is where it was showing up loose. So what I did, again, I tightened the thread and that made it come well. I tightened the upper tension. Do not tighten the lower tension. Tighten the upper tension. As I mentioned before, we spoke about, in the other video, about the tearaway paper. So when you're using your domestic machine, you want to use this type of tearaway paper. It makes it easy. So you want a piece up under it and a piece on top. What this does, this makes it so through the machine better, but this is only for the domestic machine. It's not needed really for your uh, industrial machines if you're using the right needle and feet. And with the industrial machine, naturally you're using a 16 or 18 needle also. You also want a big needle and you're using the coarser thread. So now I'm gonna sew this and you'll see how nicely it sews up under the foot. So when you start sewing the leather, especially on the domestic machines, you're gonna lower the needle into the leather first. Bring your foot down. And I have the paper on both sides. And with it, you don't backstitch or reinforce the seam. You will tie the threads after you finish. And remember too, I made the stitches very long. And make sure your pieces stay even. Sometimes you, you'll need to put the left hand behind it if it's, if it's, the machine isn't really strong and you're helping it along. Like you see, it's making that sound. So here we go. So all the way to the end. Lift the foot, pull it over, cut your thread. Now here at the end, let me turn it. Remember, instead of back stitching, what you do, you tie your thread in a knot. So this one and two is sufficient. Then you cut it, and cut it about a quarter inch from the edge. Don't cut it even with the knot. Then, being the tearaway paper, you just tear it off. Comes right off. Uh, it does. Comes off. comes off so that makes it nice easy some people use toilet paper but I wouldn't suggest doing that or paper towels not the same and you see it's a nice seam so I'm great on both sides much stronger and you don't need the paper and you put it up under there 
Lower it, still want to lower the needle. And you're holding the thread when it starts. And remember too, you want the stitches longer. And here we go. Bring it out, cut your thread. Remember, cut it because it has to be four. You're going to tie it. And you always tie it in a knot. You do not back stitch on leather, it's not good practice. Then cut it again about a quarter inch from, and it's good. So again, this is the industrial machine. So first we did the domestic machine, we did the industrial machine. Now we're putting the two pieces of leather together. And again, this is the leather machine. Now what, what this foot does, it doesn't just stay flat. It's what we call a walking foot. So it slows a little, walks, slows a little, walks. As you'll see it when I do it, I'm gonna go slowly. And as we did before, cut your threads, cut your threads. I'm only going to tie one end, but you you know, well, you know how we tied it, so there's no need to do it on this. So we did that, and it sewed it nice and beautiful. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get the seams open, and to do that, we're going to pound them. So what I did here, I labeled each of the ones that we sewed. LM, this is the leather machine. Home, that's the domestic machine. And industry, industrial. So for that's the industrial machine. And the reason I did that, because I'm going to top stitch them the same way that I, um, I mean, with the same machines. Okay, what I did here, I labeled each of the, each of the machines that I sewed. This was the industrial machine I sewed it on. This was the domestic machine. And this was the leather machine. Naturally, when you're sewing leather, the better choice is the leather machine, but everyone can't afford that. So if you can't, you, the industrial machine is second. If you're using the home machine, you can do a couple of things. One, you use the roll hem foot, which I, I showed you in the other video. Or you really don't need the roll hem if you're using the... Uh, tearaway paper, so then you won't need that roll hem, that roll foot. I'm sorry, the roll foot. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how the seams are pounded open, and we're going to trim them. So I'm going to show you how we top stitch them. Now you can use either a bigger naga hide. This one's too little. It works, but this nylon one is better. You can tell by the sound. <laughs> it's heavier. And I'm using the all, this anvil, I keep saying all, this anvil so you don't bang it on your table or somewhere. And these are very, very inexpensive, the little ones. So once I pound it from the wrong side, I pound it from the right. By this being of this nylon type material, it won't scratch or hurt the leather. And we have a 
nice flattened seam. So I'm going to do this for all three and I'm going to show you how we would glue one of them and I'm going to show you how we would uh, double tape the other and then I'm going to top stitch the last. So I want to get all of the seams open. So here we have these two seams open. One I'm going to glue and the other one I'm going to tape. This is one that I'm going to top stitch. So what I do, I'm going to trim or cut the top seam, reduce it. I'm reducing the top one. So to do that, I put the scissors inside and I'm cutting the seam down to about eighth of an inch, a little more is okay. And these are the 12 inch scissors, so you gotta have a good pair of scissors to do this. There you see, I just reduced it. Now I'm gonna fold this over so it's on top of that one. And I'm gonna pound it, but as I pound it, I have to push the seam, this piece, towards this one, over. It's over. And we can do it from the, the back side too. You always want to do this before you sew it. Some people like to sew it first and pound it second. That's wrong. You want to do this. Now, when you're doing a seam like this, which, which I'm going to top stitch, you do not need to glue it nor tape it because the stitching is holding it in place. So as you can see here, I top stitch the seam. And you see it from the wrong side. I came over a quarter of an inch from the seam and ran a stitch down. But you don't want to do that without pounding it first. This is a top stitching. Sometimes they'll do two stitches, but I only wanted to do one to show you how it's done. Now, when you're gonna glue your seam, you always put it on something that if you get glue on it, it's not a problem. So I don't want it on this. I don't want it on my table. So I put a piece of paper up under it. And naturally, the size of the leather, you put a bigger piece of paper. Now, what a lot of people do when they're gluing, they put a roll of glue on this side of the seam and a roll on this side. You don't want to do that. You only need to put a little glue on the seam side and then press it down. So, here's the glue. Gonna wipe it off. What I'm doing, I'm wiping it off the stem to get it only on the brush. Here we go. And remember, I'm only gluing this side of the seam. As you can see, I put it lightly on there. I fold it over. Softly press it down. I do the same thing with the other side, but I got to re glue. And when you finish with the glue, always put the top back on it properly and tighten it. If you don't, it will dry out. Then I softly press it. Now once I press it, then I can give it another little 
nudge. With the hammer. And it stays put. Now, the reason that we do that, one side, when you do both sides, it's too strong. It stays stuck. You can't get it apart without it dest without destroying it. So let's say later down the road, I wanted to alter this, take it in some. By putting the tape, the glue rather, on one side, that allows me to open it without damage. And then re-glue the one side back. And it's fine. Now with the double-sided tape, on the seam, I put it right at the edge of the seam. Softly press it in place. Once it's in place, you can peel. it stayed in place you peel that off the opposite side off then you take it softly press it against what you're pressing it against and it stays stuck there's no mess no worry about glue it holds it beautifully me my preference is definitely the double edged the double sided tape versus glue it's perfect. And it does also allow you to take it apart at a later time without any problem. But as you did with the glue, same thing. I only did one side, there's no need to do the other side because you understand and I give it a little one over from the right side and it's beautiful as they say. Now, what I'm going to do now, we finished sewing it. We did the top stitch. We did the gluing. We did the taping. So, I'm going to press it. So, first, we press it from the right side. But in doing so, naturally, you do not apply the iron to it. What I have here is a piece of type of flannel wool, but it's double. So, I put two pieces together. It's about a um, eight, 10 ounce, and sewed it all the way around so the two pieces are together. What this does, this protects your leather. So, on the wrong side. So on top, we don't need steam. You don't want steam, because sometimes what can happen if you steam it, it draws the leather in. In other words, destroys it. So that's the wrong side. And we flip it over. And what I can do, I'm feeling for the actual seam so I know where I'm pressing it. And what I'm doing when I press it, I'm putting some weight on it. Not a lot, but just some. You're not uh, really pushing it hard. So just holding it on there. Presses it nice. Now the one with the top stitch. You did the same with the, the back, the wrong side, so now it's the right side. So, again, I'm putting this on top, putting weight on it. This one I'm going to hold a little longer because I want that top stitch part to stay flat. And with this, you can keep folding it back to check. But as long as you have these double pieces of cloth that's thick, it won't damage your leather as long as you don't leave it on there for an hour. And there we go. That's how you would press leather. But never ever do you put the iron directly to the leather or something thin like this muslin or something like that on top. You want thick. And do not use a type of fabric that has like a corduroy or something because if you do and you put it to your garment, it's going to transfer that those stripes or whatever that little thick pattern might be onto your leather and you don't want that on there. And that's all there is to it. Thank you. Okay. So here we go. All our pieces. 